Hello and welcome to our Lent Hope Service. We hope you enjoy joining in with us to worship God. We meet here in the presence of God who knows us, loves us and wants to meet with us. Lord, open our thoughts to share the experience of our lives in your presence. God, be with us. God, be with us. Lord, open our thoughts to listen to your presence in one another. God, be with us. God, be with us. Lord, open our hearts to know your grace and love at work in our lives. God, be with us. God, be with us. You, Lord, know our comings in and goings out. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, know our mistakes and failures. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, offer the gift of forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God forgive us, heal and renew us in Christ's name. Amen. is like a man who plants a seed in the ground. The seed begins to grow. It grows night and day. It doesn't matter whether the man is sleeping or awake. The seed still grows. He doesn't know how it happens. Without any help, the ground produces grain. First the plant grows, then the head, and then all the grain in the head. When the grain is ready, the man cuts it. This is the harvest time. Time that the seed spends in the dark earth. We can't see what is happening, but the seed is putting down roots, taking in nutrients, and starting its journey to the sun. Lent is a dark, quiet time to rest, to look inwards and be nourished by our God as we journey towards Easter and Jesus and the cross and resurrection.
Hello, it's really good to be with you today at the, the beginning, not the first day of, but the beginning of Lent. And we're thinking towards Easter. But today I want us to think, to start with, about hope for seeds. But if we just look at this, this is Exhibit A. It's a seed. Now, I want you to use your imaginations. I want you to think that this tiny wee little seed is, has feelings and imaginations like us and can speak like us. And as I think about it, and I think a seed, when we want it to grow, we put it into the soil, which is dark, maybe damp, but quite a frightening experience. And that could be how that seed would feel. He would feel that it is very difficult. And I'm guessing <laughs> that he might feel fear and trepidation and even panic as he's in this very difficult situation. I'm sure he longed to be in the light and warmth. But in this seemingly difficult place, this little seed is surrounded actually by everything it needs, its moisture and its nutrients. Gradually, as it searches for light, its roots begin to grow, to take up more water and nutrients, and slowly its tiny cotyledon leaves begin to grow towards the light, and thus allow the subsequent leaves to begin to sprout too. These new leaves start miraculously to form a food factory for the plants, the chlorophyll they contain absorbs the light, which is transferred to energy storing molecules. Gradually, the plant grows even more. It develops flowers or fruit or vegetables. The hard life the seed endured for a while was worthwhile after all. And I'm sure the plant would look back and be very pleased that it hadn't been able to jump out of the pot at the first panic attack. In many ways, this life cycle mirrors our own experiences. There are times when we go through very challenging experiences, which we would love to just abandon and go into the light and some new adventure. Yet these difficult times are really important in helping us grow in our spiritual lives. As we face difficulties, we turn to find the Son, Jesus. Knowing that he longs to be with us, supporting us through every aspect of our lives. As we reach out to him, getting his nutrients, and his moisture from the word, from prayer, just spending time with him, we gradually bear flowers or fruit or vegetables, if you like, which attract people to come to us. And so then we will be able to share the truth of how in our deepest, darkest moments, God was with us. We're now in the time of Lent. Orthodox believers describe Lent as a season of bright sadness. Spring is coming and as we move from winter we're aware that the cold dark of winter has sometimes overwhelmed us, reflecting situations we have faced in life's journey. Spring is coming and the sight of the spring flowers fills our hearts and minds with hope of sunshine and warmth and in many ways, brighter times. Lent is a time for reflecting on the dark days leading up to the crucifixion, but it also points the way forward to Jesus's glorious resurrection on Easter Sunday, which gives us all who believe in him a sure and certain hope of an eternal future with him. That is the brightness of Lent. Hope song. You see into this 
fragile heart All the struggle and the pain You hear my heart cry And perfectly you sing to me Songs of healing And songs of hope Hands that never let me go The Father who made us Who watches and knows us Carries me through Yeah You shine Wednesday service this year, we were reminded that underlying everything, including our imperfections, our confessions and repentance, there is always the love of our Father God. As the ash was put on our foreheads in the sign of the cross, the words, remember Jesus loves you, were said. So, with this in mind, I found some reading material for the period of Lent. It began with a quotation by the English theologian Callistos Ware. He said, The most important thing that happens between God and the human soul is to love and be loved. I am also equipped by the Father's love letter by Hetland Leaf. Each line is taken from verses in the Bible, both Old and New Testament. I'm sure you will recognise quite a few of them. I would like to read it all to you, but as there are 54 lines, I will share with you just a taster. Father's Love Letter My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. For you were made in my image. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I am not distant and angry, but am the complete expression of love. 
for I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. I am your father and I love you even as I love my son, Jesus. Jesus died so that you and I could be recon reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I am waiting for you. Love, your dad, almighty God. Amen. And I'll come to a time of prayer and at the end of the first two short prayers we will say together we praise and thank you Jesus. As we continue in this season of Lent we come before you to praise and thank you Jesus for everything you endured for our sakes in order that our relationship with you might be fully restored and because you were raised from the dead and are even now at the right hand side of your father interceding and advocating for us, we know we have a sure and certain hope of eternity with you. We praise and thank you, Jesus. We bring before you our world with all its difficulties and darkness. We especially lift Ukraine before you and ask that you would stop this needless fighting. Comfort and strengthen all those who are suffering because of this war. Help us to support all these people in our prayers and help us to keep our eyes focused on you because you are the author and perfecter of life. We praise and thank you, Jesus. In this season of Lent, we are reminded of our own difficulties and struggles. Sometimes the way seems very dark. In the midst of our weakness, we ask that you would be strong for us. Lord, rise up within us. Let your spirit shine out of every broken place we've walked through. Allow your power to be manifest through our weakness so that others will recognise that it is you who is at work on our behalf. We ask that you would trade the ashes of our lives for the beauty of your presence. Thank you that you are with us whatever the trial we are facing and that you are greater than the trial. Thank you that the victory is ours because of Jesus and all he has done for us. We praise you that you make all things new. We praise and thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hello. I found this simple poem that I think illustrates our theme from the darkness of winter to the light of spring, both seasonally and spiritually. I hope you enjoy it. It's called Think of It and it's by 
Zaro Vile. Think of it, the first shudder of damp that somehow signalled all was ready. Then, in the deep inside of earth, in the muted underneath of winter, spring begun. Not with a sudden trumpet of green or a sky of confetti blossoms, but with a seed, small, pale and barely breathing. It lay quietly, waiting for the lavender clouds that carry the first warm rains. Then, for some reason, as ancient and every day as the sun itself, the seed cracked, split and softly burst into a faint tendril, a root, a sprout, a thin wisp of a growing thing. And, with no thought of stopping, it pushed through the dark soil with the force of a billion winter winds until it pierced the crust of the outside and split the frozen armour of earth which has held spring safe since time begun. enjoyed our Lent service today. We have been thinking, haven't we, about darkness to light and our Lent journey follows Jesus through his journey to the cross, his darkness and his suffering but then his glorious resurrection which is our hope. I mean, we start, don't we, Lent, in when the evenings are still quite dark, it's still cold, the mornings are still quite dark, though they are getting lighter. But by the time we get to Easter, the clocks have gone forward and we're in full spring, the flowers are out, you can hear the birds tweeting, and it is truly glorious. All those bulbs that have been sitting under the soil through the dark months of the winter suddenly bringing their wonderful displays, their wonderful smells 
I've got a bowl of hyacinths on the table and they smell absolutely wonderful. I wonder if you, you're doing anything for Lent, if you're taking something up, if you're spending perhaps more time in prayer or thinking about Jesus and your journey. I am doing the Lectio 365 prayer. I've been doing it for a long time. I'm also doing the uh, Live Lent, the Church of England's reflections and they're lovely they're about sort of 10 minutes and it's just really lovely and prayerful i'm also reading the archbishop of canterbury's lent book for this year by isabel handley um, embracing justice um, i can't tell you how good it is because i have to confess i haven't actually started it yet but i will have finished it by easter sunday Let's have the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us always, now and forevermore. Amen. And now a blessing. This blessing comes from the Faith and Worship website, the Celtic Worship. It's I use a lot of their prayers and blessings because I think they're very beautiful and this one is a modern blessing in the Celtic tradition. Bless this house and those within. Bless our giving and receiving. Bless our words and conversation. Bless our hands and recreation. Bless our sowing and our growing. Bless our coming and our going. Bless all who enter and depart. Bless this house, your peace impart. Amen. <laughs>